What's up guys, Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're looking at the third and final build guide for the DIY RE73P. It's been an awesome build so far and I'm keen to finish off this amazing project with you all. But that's enough from me, let's get into the build. The next stage is the output stage, which is once again, pretty similar component wise to what we've been doing. So next up, you wanna get bag seven out and we're gonna get all the resistors out of the bag first. And the resistors are pretty simple. You're just gonna put them in place like we did before. But there is one resistor you want to be careful of. It's R41, the red resistor. And it needs to sit up off the board a little bit, just like we did with resistor 42, R42, the green one next to it. And that's just because these can overheat if they're too close to the board. So you just want to make sure they're lifted up off the board just a little bit and that there's a bit of space off the board there. Once all your resistors are in place, you can solder them and trim the legs. Next up are similar components once again to the preamp stages. We've got these metal can trim transistors this time there's only two and make sure once again that you put those spaces on and you orientate them correctly on the board with those tabs then there's just one 10 alum capacitor make sure that and the electrolytic that comes up next are orientated properly just make sure that your electrolytics the positive longer leg goes in where that plus sign is just double check that if you're unsure then once again we got some of these other capacitors that need to be vertically stacked that's fine, just make sure that they're in the board the right way again. There is one of these capacitors that just sits vertically in the board this time, uh, the 5000 P cap, so that one just goes in as is. And then there's another trim pot, so with the trim pot, just like we did before, put it in place, hold it, put a big dollop of solder, and then check the orientation, make sure it's flat on the board, and then you can solder the rest of the legs and then trim it. Now the last part of this section is a bit trickier, we're going to be moving on to the output transformer. Now, DIY RE have actually made the output transformer a little bit simpler in some ways to putting input transformer wires in a board. Yeah, it's a bit of a different process to what I've done before. Anyway, what you want to do is you need to pull out this black hookup wire. And whenever you're going to solder wires to things, you want to tin the ends of the leads first. So that just means putting a bit of solder on the ends of the leads. So you just twist the ends of the leads and then put a bit of solder on them to tin them. Then you want to wrap the ends of the wire around pins six and seven of the transformer. I did this with some pliers. It seemed to help a bit to get them in place properly. Then you just want to heat the pin and wire for about five seconds and add some solder. And because you've got some solder, on the lead it'll help melt it all in nice and neat next you want to find a bit of a component lead that you have left over it can be any of the leads from the components that you've snipped off there should be heaps of them and wrap this one around pins two and four and then solder those as well and once again i just used some pliers to wrap it around the pins a bit easier then once you've done that we've got this wiring harness that we have to solder to the remaining pins now reading this on the instructions was a little bit tricky but first you want to do is remove the ends from the wires and then twist them and then tin the ends. Then we need to solder the wiring harness to the transformer according to the chart in the instructions. So how this works, I kind of got stumped by this when I first looked at it, but harness pin one, which is the red, just start by holding the harness pin vertically with the red at the top. And then that means red is one and then the following wire is two then the following wire is three the following wire is four and then that'll make it easy to then match them each of these wires to the transformer pin so the red wire goes to pin eight the next wire down goes to pin five the next wire down again number three goes to three and the next wire down fourth one goes to pin one and yeah so when i read the table it kind of stumped me at first maybe i was tired <laughs> but um yeah that's the order of those and the matching pins they solder to after you solder these you want to gather the wires neatly together and fasten them with the cable tie now you don't want to over tighten the cable tie just gently tighten it uh, just so it holds the wires together and then snip the end of the cable tie that's left over and then we're almost done we just need to put the whole thing together so First up, you want to mount the motherboard to the bracket with three of the black pan head screws. 
The screws go in two of the mounting holes on the far right side of the board and then one just below the output transformer cutout. Don't do the standoffs yet. You want to fasten the input transformer to the bracket with the two flat head screws. So what this does is pull everything kind of into place. My input transformer was a little bit skewed, but once I screwed it in place, it all sat neatly on the board with no issues. Then you want to place the output transformer in the gap of the motherboard with the pins seven, five, six, and eight facing upwards. So make sure you've got this orientated correctly. Then you wanna fasten it to the bracket with the larger silver screws and nuts from bag 8.1. And what I do is, is I'll put the screws through and then I'll just finger tight the nuts and then I'll use a pair of pliers just to hold the nut in place and screw them in tighter. Then we've gotta push these caps onto the switches according to their labels. The first one should be polarity. So make sure the polarity cap goes first then the low Z, the 48 volt phantom power one, then the line cap. When you push these on, sometimes they can be a bit tricky. You're gonna feel like you're gonna break your switches. It does sometimes require a bit of force. Just be gentle, but firm with them as you push them on. And if it feels wrong, just take the cap off and start again, because you don't wanna break these switches. But yeah, they can be, you know, an effort to push on. Then we just need to mount the subboards. So you want to install the two taller standoffs in the mounting holes that overlap the pre one section and the shorter one in the hole next to con 2A, that little header there. Then you want to mount the subboards and screw them to the standoffs with the remaining pan head screws. Then we need to mount the front panel. So you place the front panel on the bracket, paying close attention to that LED for the 48 volt phantom. You don't want to bend that. Make sure it lines up and goes in nice and neat. Once all of the switches and pots and the LED are all in and everything's sitting flush, you can fasten the panel loosely with the nuts of the switch and potentiometer and the nut and washer of the DI jack. Then you want to press all of the switches and reposition the panel if any of them are sticking. If all the switches move properly as you push them in and out you can tighten the nuts turn both knobs completely counterclockwise then place the knobs so the pointers align with the most counterclockwise part of the silk screen so basically make sure the dials are all the way counterclockwise put the knob facing zero for the Khan Hill switch and at the lowest dot on the left for the trim pot and then just hold them in place and then tighten them up with a flathead screwdriver. They do give you a little flathead screwdriver, but I use my own for this. It's a bit better. Then if that's all together, you're probably successful in finishing your 73P. But what we have to do next is our final test and calibration. So first up, we're gonna test the output. The first test is simple. We just need to make sure the 73P is passing signal from input to output. So connect the input and outputs to the 73P in your rack using your extender then set all switches out gain to 0 db and trim fully clockwise in room eq wizard change the unit to dbfs and send a 1 kilohertz minus 10 dbfs signal open the levels in room eq wizard the meter should read within a couple of db of minus 10 dbfs and we'll calibrate that in a moment then we need to calibrate the output transistor bias so in this step we will set the bias of t8 for the highest headroom possible first we want to set the multimeter to read dc volts then you want to probe both sides of R41. It doesn't matter which probe goes where. Then you need to trim VR1 until the meter shows 2.5 volt DC or negative 2.5 VDC, depending on which way you've placed your probes. Then we need to calibrate the gain. So keep the input and output connected as in the previous steps. In room EQ wizard generator, send another one kilohertz tone at negative 60 dBFS. Set all the switches out, gain to 50 dB this time, and trim fully clockwise. Open the levels in room EQ wizard. The in meter should be within a few dB of minus 10 dBFS. Trim VR2 on the pre two board until it reads close to minus 10 dBFS as possible. Finally, we need to go through each feature one by one to make sure the 73P is working correctly. So first, you want to keep your connections the same as the previous steps and set the generator back to negative 10 dBFS and open in levels. Start with all switches out, gain at 0 dB and the trim fully clockwise. The polarity, I'm going to toggle the phase switch in and out. As long as the level stays the same, the switch is working correctly. 
For the low Z switch, engage the low. The in level should increase by about 3 dB. For the line, engage the line switch. The in level should drop by about negative 25 decibels. For the trim, turn the knob completely in both directions. At fully counterclockwise, the in level should drop by about 80 dB. For the gain knob, test each step by first reducing the room EQ wizard level by the gain amount for that step, then switching to that step. For example, for the second gain step, reduce REW level from 20 dB from negative 10 dBFS to negative 30 dBFS then switch to position two. The in level should be within two dB of the negative 10 dBFS for each step. So it goes up by 20 for the first step, then another five dB, another five dB. So you're just gonna keep dropping the roomy Q wizard level by five dB as they step up. And then you don't need to test the 48 volt phantom power because that's already been tested. If that all works, congratulations, you've finished your 73 Hopefully it's been a good build. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful for anyone that's viewing it. Enjoy your preamp and I'll catch you in the next one. So thanks again for following along with this amazing build series. And thanks so much to DIYRE for sending me this kit for building and review. I'm sure you can all agree they make amazing products with amazing quality build guides to help beginners and experienced builders alike in building these complicated projects. Remember, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comment section down below or alternatively, email me at mitch at the DIYrecordingstudio.com. Don't forget, you can also reach out to DIYRE if you have any questions regarding the build or any technical issues that you might be having. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com. I'll catch you soon.